very brave young man, very brave. I learn from them and they learn from me. If water is the lifeblood, electricity is what makes everything go wrong. How do we build this uh, and where are we going from here? From a silo filled with grain in Kirkuk, to running water in Ramadi, to preservation of the historic ruins at Babylon, since 2005, U.S. Provincial Reconstruction Teams, or PRTs, have cooperated with Iraqis on a wide range of development projects, living side by side with the military in all 18 provinces in Iraq. PRTs in Iraq are closing as of September 2011. Over the next half hour, we'll look at their accomplishments and legacy. First, here's U.S. Ambassador to Iraq, James Jeffrey, explaining the PRT mission. You cannot know what's going on in a country by simply sitting in the capital. The very fact that you had PRT personnel, civilians as well as military out there, was a sign that this is a transition, it's a stabilization operation, it's not a period of major fighting. To define the concept of provincial reconstruction teams, here are PRT members in their own words. In your usual country, you have the embassy in the capital city. If you're fortunate, you have a few consulates, one consulate maybe, but here you had a team, one or more teams, in every province in the country. In the early years, we did a lot of bricks and mortar projects, building schools, helping build hospitals, clinics, uh, refurbishing provincial council buildings. As time moved on, the PRT's mission shifted not so much to building things, but to providing training and technical assistance. The two big agencies working here are going to be the military and the State Department. It's also other agencies, USAID, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Department of Justice. The right person going to the right country at the right moment in history can make a huge difference. Farming is a small but critical piece of Iraq's economy. That's why PRTs have emphasized agriculture from the start, often with small grassroots efforts, like this demonstration farm north of Baghdad. It's feeding time for Abu Risha's flock. Dozens of sheep and lambs racing to the trough at his 86-acre farm north of Baghdad. My name is Abu Risha. I lived on this farm since I was born and lived all my life in this area. My father, grandfather, and grandfather, father, all were farmers. Though he wears a traditional robe, Abu Risha has a modern outlook. His sheep are eating high-protein pellets rather than wandering the fields foraging for grass. His wheat fields are lush and green thanks to modern irrigation techniques. He credits a U.S. provincial reconstruction team that selected him as a demonstration farmer and provided funding for some modest upgrades. My name is Tim Larry. I'm the Provincial Reconstruction Team Ag Advisor for Taji, Tarmia, and Istiklal. Farmers don't normally respond well to theoretical training. They don't work well with classroom training. So what you need is some sort of an environment where they can come within their community, within someone they know and trust, see something being done, go back to their farm and say, I can replicate that. In Iraq's hot, dry, and dusty climate, PRT agricultural teams across the country have also focused on improving irrigation. For centuries, Iraqi farmers flooded their crops through shallow ditches. The PRT has encouraged investing in sprinklers or pipes to provide a steady drip, using up to 70 percent less water than flood irrigation. Now they see that when they don't flood their fields, all their fertilizer doesn't wash away. When they don't flood their fields, it doesn't pack their ground. The roots have a chance to breathe so that the plant thrives. Along with the latest irrigation techniques, the PRTs have for years promoted hoop houses, plastic greenhouses that extend the growing season for eggplants, cucumbers, and tomatoes. They've been a big success popping up all over the country. I believe in progress in the world. When the PRT explained these farming methods to us, I was convinced that this was a better way. I am convinced that this way of farming will succeed. Instead of having two greenhouses, I will have five greenhouses and more from this success. Abu Risha is an influential sheikh in the area. He's not just someone who's looking for something. He's looking for help on his community, which is exactly the person we wanted. 
it's not just about the money, it's about more than that. Well, it's about your family. It's about life. In northern Iraq, a cornerstone agricultural project for PRT Kirkuk was renovating this grain silo that was looted and damaged in 2003. The PRT replaced all the moving parts, and the Iraqi government supplied the final piece, a hydraulic truck lift dramatically cutting the time for weighing and processing grain. In Babel province, the PRT helped build this farmer's co-op 50 miles south of Baghdad. Local farmers auctioning fresh vegetables in the parking lot. Wholesalers traveling from all over the country to take advantage of competitive prices. First Lieutenant Dan McCord provides security for the Babel PRT. He says getting to know local leaders by name was key to stabilizing the area. As PRTs from across Iraq look back on lessons learned, most agree these face-to-face -face relationships are critical. You know, as a soldier, you realize that there's a there's sometimes a target put on you. Once you have those relationships, once you understand, you know, their role and they understand who you are, um, the uh, the walls come down a little bit. And you have to give credence to that personal relationship, um, and that involves sometimes calling people and just saying hi. And you don't deal with voicemail, you don't deal through email, you're building people-to-people -people relationships. So things take time to brew and stew to develop. In Iraq, the coin of the realm is trust. And trust only comes through personal interaction, frequent personal interaction. Up next, encouraging women entrepreneurs. One, uh, one, ten, ten in Iraq. Skyrocketing growth at a regional airport and the bond between civilians and soldiers serving on PRTs. The young kids who take us outside the wire time after time, they're prepared to take a bullet for us. And sometimes they have. 